This is the Manifest Your Greatness podcast, episode number 99. Hi friends, I'm Curtis J. Washington. And look, the purpose of this podcast is simple. We are constantly being bombarded with messages like, we could be happy if only we had a particular thing, or we could be successful if only we made X amount of dollars, or we could be at peace if only so-and-so loved me. These messages are not only disempowering, but also they are simply not true. This is because it's not about where you are and where you want to be. It's about who you are right now and who you wish to become. Once you know what the ideal you looks like, then you will automatically start becoming aware of what steps you can take right now to move in the right direction. And the goal of this podcast is to help you look within and discover all the love, all the beauty, and all of the unlimited potential that you already possess and for you to set it free for you and for the world to see. Welcome to the Manifest Your Greatness podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Manifest Your Greatness podcast, where we explore practical and actionable steps that help you manifest the greatness that you already possess deep inside. And today, it's a perfect time to talk about ideas for the new year, right? We're starting 2024, exciting times. Got some ideas of what we want to focus on in 2024, perhaps. But how do we know if we are pursuing those ideas for the right reasons. And what I mean by that is, how do we know if the voice we're hearing inside of us is our intuition and not our ego? How do we know that what we're hearing and what we're trying to tune into, that voice of wisdom that we rely on, right? How do we know that It's a voice that we can trust and it's going to be leading us to long-term fulfillment and joy. And it's not something that we're doing to be recognized or to to be accepted by others or something like that. Self-preservation, right? We want to make sure that we're listening to the right messages. So let's talk about intuition versus ego. This episode is going to be about how to determine whether or not we're hearing our ego or our intuition when it comes to deciding if the idea that we're exploring is something that we want to pursue for the right reasons or not. So we've all had times in our lives when we're struck with an idea, right? Something that really just demands our attention. Something novel that captures our curiosity. I remember when I was in my freshman year of college at the University of Hawaii and I was dead set on being a business major. And not to date myself too much, but back when I was in college, Japan's economy was incredibly strong. In fact, it had just recently passed the United States in terms of GDP per capita. So when it came time for me to select a language to complement my business degree, like most students in Hawaii in college at the time, I chose Japanese. Now, I learned a lot during my first year of college, but By the time I finished my freshman year, the two most important things that I learned were one, I absolutely loved learning Japanese. There was something about the language that was both beautiful, free, and and just deeply introspective. The more I learned, the more I felt like I was opening a door within myself a little bit wider. And as everyone knows, there are so many subtleties in language, right? Uh, where there's like a nuance or a word or a phrase that doesn't directly translate from one language to another. So I remember, for example, when I first learned the phrase onegaishimasu. This phrase is used in Japanese so many times a day. And the closest translation I found for this phrase in English is, please do this for me. But that's really a dry translation because the phrase has emotional undertones. Onegaishimasu also carries with it a meaning of a sense of understanding that what you're asking could be a burden to the other person. It could even include a request for forgiveness. It could even include a meaning of, from this day forward, I'm going to come to rely on you quite a lot. And and I hope I'm not going to get in the way. And if I do, 
please know that it's not intentional and I mean no disrespect and I'm really trying to do the best that I can. Onegaishimasu. One simple phrase, so many potentially complex interpretations. I was fascinated. Now, the second thing that became abundantly clear after my freshman year of college was that I couldn't stand accounting. I barely passed my Accounting 101 class, and I knew that more challenging classes in that same vein stood between me and a bachelor's degree in business administration. So I found myself at one of the first major forks in my young academic career. I remember tapping into my feelings in search of guidance. How do I feel about continuing to study business? And at the time, Japanese language was supposed to be a skill to help bolster my market value if I was going to graduate with a degree in business. And I felt like I was expanding as a person when I was learning Japanese. But there was no BA in Japanese at the University of Hawaii. And even if there was, what kind of market value would it have on its own? I, I, I had no idea. So I just wasn't sure what to do. And, and there was another emotion in play here as well. I was overcome with doubt. You see, when I was in high school, I had chosen to study French in order to meet my foreign language requirement. And I studied really, really hard but I was absolutely terrible at it. I was so bad that my teacher told me that she would round up my score on my final to give me a passing grade to meet my graduation requirement, but told me very clearly that foreign language study is just not for me. She actually went as far as to recommend that I stay away from foreign language study in the future altogether. Encouraging, right? So now I find myself studying a language just about as dissimilar from English as you could possibly get. I couldn't pass French in high school, and now I'm attempting to learn a language with totally different grammar, steeped in the non-Western culture, oh, and a writing system that contains two alphabets, plus thousands of characters, many of which can be read multiple ways. So as you could probably guess, my confidence was not soaring when I thought about the decision that I saw before me but I had to make a choice. Do I grind it out and get my business degree or do I focus on Japanese language, which is what I really like and I'm getting the most joy and growth out of, but I don't know what I'm gonna do with that in terms of a major. Do I just pursue that and hope something opens up? Maybe something I can apply my Japanese language skills towards in terms of a degree? Well, after some soul searching, I trusted my intuition. I followed my heart and I ended up graduating with a BA in Asian studies with a focus on Japanese language and culture, which at the time I didn't even know existed when I was making that decision. So whenever big decisions show up in our lives, we often need to do some serious soul searching to help us decide which path to take. We may try to pay close attention to which direction our feelings may be nudging us to go or we might write a list of pros and cons to help us think logically about the decision at hand. Or perhaps we imagine someone we admire and ask ourselves, well, what would they do in a similar situation? One of my favorite go-tos is David Goggin. So sometimes when I find myself in a tough spot, I ask myself, what would Goggins do? Now, these are all great methods to help you determine which path could be the right one for you. But it's precisely at times like these that your ego can show up unannounced and crash your self-discovery party. This is because sometimes it's difficult to determine whether those butterflies in your stomach or even those sudden soaring senses of optimism you feel, are they steeped in intuition or are, are they born out of ego? Well, thankfully, ego-based ideas do leave some clues for us that we can use to avoid following our ego off a proverbial cliff. But differentiating between ideas stemming from ego and intuition involves tuning in to your inner signals. And if you're like me, oftentimes those signals can be vague, mixed, or even contradictory. So let's take a look at some things we can do that can help 
get rid of some of that static that can make it so hard for us to clearly hear what our intuition, our true inner voice, is trying to tell us. Before we dive deeper, let's take a step back and talk about motivation. When we think broadly about being motivated, we usually think about it in a positive context, right? If we're motivated to clean up the garage or motivated to go to the gym or motivated to eat healthier foods, these are all great things, right? Well, usually that's the case, right? But to be certain whether intuition or ego has the reins in this case, we can ask ourselves a few simple questions and then answer those questions honestly. Is this motivation driven by desire for validation, for leverage, or a fear of failure? If your answer is yes, then your ego has got your number. If your motivation was truly rooted in intuition, it would arise from a genuine sense of alignment with your most coveted core values and beliefs. Ego-based ideas, on the other hand, can actually conflict with your core values or involve compromising your principles. Another thing we can consider here is your emotions. Ego-based ideas are tied to emotions such as pride, envy, or defensiveness. If you find yourself being motivated because you want to feel good for feel good sake, you guessed it. Ego one, you zero. Your intuition-based ideas will always invite a more centered and positive emotion. You'll sense a feeling of overall goodness from the idea that radiates outward from your perceived efforts. The exact opposite of emotions tied to ego-based ideas that are focused on how you will feel in relation to those around you. Then there's your time perspective regarding the idea. If your idea conjures up images of short-term gains or immediate gratification, then your idea is likely flashing ego and bright neon. Whereas intuitive ideas tend to align more with the goal of long-term sustainable fulfillment and well-being. And long-term sustainable fulfillment is achieved through meaningful work aligned with your purpose. Then there's scarcity versus abundance. The ego is always thinking about self-preservation and what's in it for me. Your ego operates from a scarcity mindset and therefore doesn't want you to lose out or miss out on anything. So lean into your inner dialogue here and check whether your thoughts around this idea focus on fending off limitations, lack and insufficiency rather than on inviting abundance and possibility. The ego believes that there aren't enough resources, opportunities, or options available for everyone. So you've got to get yours before someone else does. With this mindset, you'll be tempted to hoard resources instead of share them, to shun calculated risks instead of take them, and to hide your ideas from others instead of collaborate with others. When you feel insecure, lacking, and have a scarcity mindset, your idea is being promoted by ego. Remember that true intuition-based ideas invite notions of abundance, confidence, and fulfillment. Intuition drives comprehensive goals with an and also instead of an either or objective. Something else we can consider here when we're trying to discern whether or not our ego is driving our decision to pursue an idea is whether or not we find ourselves searching for external validation for our actions. While validation to a degree can be helpful because it's a good form of feedback, relying heavily on external validation, that's a sign that you're potentially valuing social or economic self-preservation over staying true to your values and your passions. There was a period in my life when I was early in my corporate career that I was very conscious of the brands of clothing I was wearing especially in the workplace and at social gatherings with friends in the same industry. I would spend more money on brand name clothing, not because I liked it more than some of the less expensive options out there, but because I thought by wearing those brands that I'd be perceived as being successful and socially in style. I was looking for someone else to acknowledge that I was doing it right instead of just wearing what made me feel good. Nowadays, anyone that knows me well knows that I rarely wear any clothing with loud logos or brand slogans on them. 
Now I choose to wear what I think matches my build and personality. So these are just a few things to consider when you find yourself evaluating a big new idea if you aren't sure if intuition or ego is guiding your decision. Like any muscle, the more often that you use this form of self-introspection to tune into your thoughts in more detail, the more skilled you will become in discerning whether an idea is ego-driven or if it's driven by intuition. One final thing that I'd like to emphasize here is always, always, always avoid making decisions regarding big ideas when you are in a bad place emotionally. When you are angry or exhausted, effective introspection is simply not possible. And your ego uses moments when you are mentally weak like that to push through its agenda. So be wary of your mood prior to attempting to fully evaluate and assess an important idea, especially one that could be difficult to unwind or get out of after you pull the trigger. So my challenge for you today is to give yourself a moment to listen to your inner voice. Observe that internal dialogue when you find yourself on the cusp of acting on a new idea. So when you're contemplating an idea, do you feel anxious or fearful? Are you gripped by FOMO? Are you overly concerned with what others will think of you? Is your idea more focused on short-term gain rather than long-term fulfillment? Do you want it because someone else has it instead of because it's what's valuable to you? These are all indications that your ego is driving your decision and that this particular idea is not focused on supporting your long-term joy and fulfillment. I hope you found these tools helpful. Thank you so much for joining this episode of Manifest Your Greatness podcast, and I look forward to spending time with you again on an episode in the near future. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Manifest Your Greatness podcast. If you liked what we've explored on this episode, then you'll love the Manifest Your Greatness coaching program. The Manifest Your Greatness coaching program is uniquely tailored to help support you on your journey to become the absolute best version of yourself. So if you are committed to taking the steps required to significantly and permanently level up in any area of your life, visit manifestyourgreatness.com forward slash contact. Again, that's manifestyourgreatness.com forward slash contact and schedule your free consultation call today. Talk soon.